All right, this will just be a quick video to show you how to run PyTorch with the GPU uh, using Google Colab. Um, I know this is not too hard, but um, just in case you don't know, we'll go through this quick. Uh, so I just opened up a, a blank document in Google Colab. You can, you know, just use a free account. And um, there's there's a so the CPU usage is free. GPUs um, are free with limitation. Uh, so should be sufficient to do some of the homeworks. Um, but anyway, um, I'm gonna, just going to use the, the quick start that's in PyTorch. We looked at that before. I know we've done things far more complicated than that by now, but um, that one's sufficient to show what we're doing. And uh, since we've been doing physics and engineering based problems, there are some aspects there that we haven't really seen um, dealing with images. So I thought I'd just talk through that real quick just so you know what's happening here. Um, so here's here's a diagram of, um, you know, like a, a, an image classification problem, which is what's done in the Py, in PyTorch. So imagine this is a really, really simplified image, really small. Um, and these are the pixels of the image. So obviously I'm not showing a whole image, just a tiny little segment, um, just for illustration. And you can see in grayscale, you know, the different intensity of the pixels, and there's lots of pixels that make up the image. And then these pixels have a number associated with them for the intensity. Um, I think I have one and zero correct. Hopefully I do. It doesn't really matter for this example, but say zero is fully black, one is fully white, and and you know, all the numbers in between there are some grayscale. You know, usually there's what? Uh, uh, anyway, uh, so these, these numbers represent uh, the, the pixel intensity, and they're on some big grid. And so we're going to flatten this um, tensor out into one long, um, uh, well, we call it a vector, one dimensional tensor here. And that's going to form our input layer. Okay, and um, this example is going to use a fully connected network. That's not the best way to handle an image, but that's fine for this uh, example. And so I'm not drawing all the connections, but every neuron here is connected to all these other ones and blah, blah, blah. And you go through how many layers. And at the end, um, you're going to have as many neurons as you have classes, uh, meaning these are the, the categories I'm trying to classify my image in. And so in this quick start example, they have um, uh, some clothing. And, and there's 10 categories, and I don't remember what they are, but like a hat or a shirt or a boot or something. So you got 10 of them. And so you're trying to, based on uh, the, the pixels and their intensity, um, you know, push more probability mass into, into the category that, that we, that the, the neural net is trained, thinks is, is the right category. And so remember, these are going to be the logits. So this would be like three and two and minus one and minus five. And then those get converted in our loss function, get converted to probabilities. And then uh, using a cross entropy loss, we do like a comparison um, against the, pro the true probability distribution, which would be like a, a one, zero, 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 where one would represent the correct category. Okay, so that's the, uh, just a little bit of background there. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I need to grab this quick start here so we can just look at it. I'm just going to actually copy and paste from it. So um, here's the, the PyTorch quick start. And let me also pull up my, my Google Colab thing. Um, here we're just doing imports. There's some things from Torch Vision because we're going to pull out this data set. It's not really important for our usage. Oops. Um, oh, no, that's fine. I'll just let it go. Uh, so just our normal imports, and then like I said, some torch vision ones that we don't really normally use, but uh, they're used here in this case because we're downloading this predefined data set that's that's already in um, PyTorch just to make it easy to have some data sets to go. And so this is a fashion data set. There's training data and testing data. So let me copy and paste that over here, run that, um, and it's downloading those data sets. And then this is pretty typical stuff for us, um, batch size, training data loader, testing data loader. And then, you know, here it's just printing the shapes. So you can verify them. Um, that's not really necessary, but I can do that too. Uh, copy and paste that over. And yeah, so this is uh, the training set. There's 64 images. 
Um, this is what we call channels. Um, we'll talk more about that later when we talk about um, like uh, PDE solutions and other things. These are channels and this is the image size. So it's 28 by 28. Uh, the channel here, you could have like more channels if you had like an RGB image, you'd have three or if we were doing like a, a fluid flow field, this would be like, uh, you know, X velocity, Y velocity, Z velocity, pressure, temperature, whatever, you know, you have multiple channels that have the same grid, but have multiple data points. But here, there's just only one number associated with each grid point, and that's the, the you know, RG, or not RGB, the, the grayscale intensity. And then why there's 64 uh, numbers, because there's 64 images, and so these are just um, a number that's associated with the class. So is it like in class three or class eight? You know, there's 10 classes, I think, in this example. Okay, so let's just copy this first part here. Um, okay, and so uh, I think this is not gonna work for me because I tried this before, this, this line here. Uh, it might be that I'm using a different version of PyTorch. This is not actually a line I normally use. So here's, here's one of the first things we need to do if we wanna use the GPU. Um, we need to set our device. If you don't do it, it's all going to be CPU. And if so, if I just did device equals CPU, it would just be like normal. Um, but I can, oh, it's auto copying that for me. This is what I normally write, something like this. So this says, um, set the device to CUDA. So that'll be our GPU if uh, torch.cuda is available. So it's going to check, is CUDA available? If not, it will use a CPU. So it's nice to have a line like this. You could, you know, hard code it and just say, um, I just want to use the GPU. And then when you're um, not using, oops, when you're not using the GPU, you could oh, uh, you could go back in here and change this to CPU or whatever. But this one line, it's nice to have this because then um, it'll check for you automatically. And so if you're running this um, on, on Google Colab or on the, super, the supercomputers or wherever else we have your workstation that has a GPU, um, it can run on GPU, but if you're running it, uh, you know, just on your computer, it can use a CPU and you don't have to change this line. So here's just a regular neural net. Um, so X comes in, it does that flatten. That's what I was talking about here uh, in this picture where it's an image that's 28 by 28 and flatten is just going to um, just, you know, unroll that into one big one dimensional tensor. Uh, so it flattens it as our input layer, and that input layer is of size 28 by 28. So this is just our standard stuff. And then it goes, you know, through a few linear layers here. And then it ends with the 10 different classes. Um, and those are our logits, and it returns that. Okay. So um, if you want to use the GPU, there are kind of three things you need to do. Um, one is I got to set the device appropriately. We talked about that. The second is I need to copy all my data over to the GPU. Um, and so that's what this dot to device does. Okay, so every time I created, uh, so my, my, my um, data, my numbers of uh, uh, PyTorch tensor, I need to move that over to the GPU. And so I could go in here and get, you know, the tensors, which are the weights and biases and move them over one by one. But this line here will do this all in one shot. So if I take my model, um, it's a neural network and I do dot two device and device. Remember we defined it earlier, it'll move it over. And so if this is CPU and we're already on the CPU, it won't do anything. So no harm there. If I had just created the neural network for, and I wanted to move it, I could also do that later like this, right? But here we're just doing it in one line. So this is going to move all those parameters, all those weights and biases, um, all these, uh, yeah, elements in these linear layers and such over to the GPU. Okay, so let's run this and it's going to say I'm using the CPU device. So that's the third thing I have to do, which I haven't done yet, is that by default on Google Colab, we're going to be running on the CPU. So I'd have to go over here to change runtime type, see how it's on CPU. I need to change it to GPU. Okay, um, I'm not going to do that yet because, um, well, sure, might as well do it. I'm going to have to rerun everything, but let's just do that. Change the runtime type to GPU. So yeah, it's going to disconnect delete it because now I'm on a different uh, computer here. So we're reconnecting. It's going to take a minute. So let's just keep going. Um, oh, there we go. So it's going to take me a minute here to do all the re-imports and re-download, but um, I'll just click them and 
because I could have just done a run all. Anyway, these will run when those other ones finish. So let's just keep going. Um, this is uh, looks, should look pretty familiar, but notice that we're using a different loss function here. We're going to use this cross entropy loss instead of a mean squared error because we're doing this classification problem as we've discussed before. And then we're using stochastic gradient descent. Okay, so notice, yeah, this time I ran it says I'm using the CUDA device. I printed that out right here to see which device I was using. And yeah, I'm on the GPU, so that's good to verify that. Um, we'll run that. And now we'll define our train function. It's going to look pretty normal. There's just one thing we had to do here, um, which is the same thing discussed, which is I got to move data over to my device. So the other thing, um, well, let me just go through this. This is a typical train function we've used. Remember, we set it to dot train. Um, we run our model. We get our loss function. We do back propagation. We take a step. We zero out the gradient. I usually like to zero at the start, but here's fine too. And then we may print stuff. So here it's printing at every 100 um, batches. Um, <clears throat> so notice this line, this one is, is, is new here, which is I need to move things over to the device. Same thing we did before. Every PyTorch sensor I got to move. And so I moved all my... Um, parameters in my neural net, but I didn't move my data. So I could potentially have done that to begin with, like uh, my original training data, testing data, I could have moved that over. But if I'm batching, uh, probably means that it's because, you know, the data set's really large and I don't want to necessarily, uh, it might take too long or I might not be able to fit it all in memory at once in the GPU. So I may need to move it a batch at a time. And so that's what's happening here. Um, for some of our other problems, you know, kind of the physics space loss problems that we've done where we don't have tons of data, you know, it might be more advantageous to move it all at once. So anyway, it's something you can try out. But regardless, I need to move that data over um, to my GPU. And then the test function um, looks similar to what we've done. It looks a little different because it's a classification. So um, in addition to, well, so let's just go through just getting some sizes. We put it in evaluation mode. Um, some initialization, and notice again, we're moving that data over to our GPU. Um, we evaluate the model. This testing loss is uh, like what we've done before. And this one does one different thing because it's a classification. It's not just looking for the loss function. It wants to know how many did we get correct? How many of those images did we classify correctly? So it's looking at our prediction. This argmax um, is going through and saying which of those logits was biggest, right? So I had three and two and minus one and minus five or whatever it was. Whichever one is biggest, that's going to have the biggest probability associated with it. So it's going to get the index for that. So if it was like the second element, it's going to get a two, right? That's, and, and that's, we're going to see if that equals Y, because remember Y contained a number that was one through 10 that told me which class it was. So I'm going to add up my correct items here and divide by the size so I can see my accuracy. Okay, so there's the test. And now let's run it. This thing just goes through five epochs because there's a decent amount of data. Um, and, and yeah, we're running on the GPU, so it should be faster. Whether it's significantly faster or not is going to depend on uh, many things, right? Like uh, how big your batches are, how much data there are, is, and the type of computations you're doing and so on. But especially as you get to bigger problems, and certainly for this current homework, as you start to ramp it up, um, running on the GPU uh, can make a significant difference. So yeah, we're going pretty quick here. Um, you can see the loss function is going down. The accuracy is going up. Both good things. These accuracies are not real high because um, a linear layer is not real great for, um, you know, trying to classify an image because it's got all these pixels and we're just connecting them all together, which is not the best, but that's fine for this example. Um, I'm not going to save it and load it because I just already got it here, but let's let's run this prediction here at the end. So here you can see what those actual classes are. Right? There's 10 of them, uh, t-shirt, polo, trouser, pullover dress, blah, blah, blah. So this last thing, um, wrote them out. We're going to evaluate the model, or sorry, set an evaluation mode. This is only, we're just pulling out the very first item in our testing data, just to give an example here. You probably would want to iterate through more. Um, and it's just getting out the X and Y value of that. So again, we've got to move it to our device, evaluate the model, do the same thing we did before to get the argmax and compare it to our classes to see how well we did. And this is just getting the actual number this time to compare it to our class. And, and it's taking that number and indexing it. So if that number was two, it's going to go in here and be like, well, I guess two is our third entry in Python. That'd be the pullover. So in this case, 
uh, this very first entry in our test data, we predicted it's um, this one, which is uh, the 10th entry or index nine. Uh, we predicted ankle boot and that was the right one. It was an ankle boot. And we can actually plot it. This isn't shown here. Let's see if I can remember how to do that. Um, oh, shoot. I don't know how to generate. Uh, let's import mat, mat plot lib. And then uh, let's do plot image show. Um, okay, it's going to fill things out for me, which I don't need to do all of that. So let's see, I'm taking that image X is, remember, this is just my first data set. This is at, um, what, what is it, ankle boot? Uh, I need to move it back to my CPU so I can do this dot CPU. And that, again, if it was already on the CPU, I won't do anything, so that's fine. I don't think I need to move it, to convert to NumPy or squeeze it. Well, we'll see. Maybe I do need to squeeze it. Let's just see what happens here. Yeah, so it's a one by 28 by 28. Uh, it's got that extra um, one dimension from the uh, channel. We don't use, so I guess we'll be able to squeeze it. And there it is, right? There's those pixels, right? So we took all these pixels, mostly lots of zeros, some ones and some other numbers here, flattened it out, classified it. And, you know, it's trying to predict and um, yeah. Anyway, so that's it. So again, three things. Um, Make sure you change the runtime type to GPU and you don't have unlimited time here, right? So I always get things going on the CPU side, make sure everything's running well. And then when I'm ready to like, you know, go up in, in, in power, you know, th then I would switch the GPU. So that's one. I need to set device. Again, you could hard code it or you could use this line or one like it. Um, there are other variations that are sometimes used. And then the third thing is I got to transfer all my data. That's the most common one. You'll get errors, right? So uh, let's say I didn't do this. Uh, and then I go to try to run this. It's going to give me an error. And it will say, I expected all the tensors to be on the same device, but I found two devices. Oops, some were on CPU, some were on CUDA. So that's an indication that, oh, yeah, you didn't actually move things over to the GPU. And so then... I got to find out, you know, where that was. And again, always your model, you're going to do this one, your whatever your network is and your data for sure. And then any other parameters or things you set up. Anytime you did a torch.tensor, you know, just do a quick search for did I ever type torch.tensor, all of those things you're going to need to move over. But okay, so that's it. Um, a good one.